Valak is back and he's having none of it. Whoa. The good news is that he's going to be doing more in this movie than standing at the end of hallways looking creepy. And stay tuned for a bonus Valak easter egg that you might have missed. I can already tell that this is going to be an authentic European and historically accurate movie since the French priest and boys speak to each other in fluent English. Good lord, could you make it a little more difficult and precarious for the little boy by placing a bigger wine jug on a higher shelf? A bit of advice son, when the camera slowly pans away like that and you hear a low deep growl in the dark, it's time to get the f*** out of there ASAP. Yes? There's someone here. There's someone there? Don't you mean something there? And you don't mention the exploding wine jug and the scary growling? Otherwise a father would just assume that's one of the congregation who got lost looking for the bathroom. Whatever you're here for, you're in the house of God. Oh no, I hope we're not going to get a moment of quiet with the camera slowly panning to something in the dark followed by an ear blasting jump scare. Did I miss something? How did Valak get all these crazy Jedi superpowers all of a sudden? Hey Sister Irene, how about giving the seven-year-old nun a hand with that heavy box? Okay, so now we're in the Italian countryside, so I expect to hear everyone speaking Italian instead of speaking English in Italian accent with a few words of token Italian tossed in randomly, right? Sister Irene! Sister Deborah! She's trouble. And now, she refused to go to confession. Refutata! Uh-oh, rebel American in the house. It's about confession. You know it's a Hollywood movie when they find a way to shoehorn an American in the story set in another continent. Hey, how can we make an excuse for everyone in Europe to be speaking English so Americans won't have to read any subtitles? And can we add in a non-white actor so we don't get yelled at? I'm not sure how this character makes any sense. I could maybe buy it if her family's originally from Italy and she could speak Italian, but are we supposed to believe that her dad sent her all the way from Mississippi to Italy to live in a boarding school with only English? You could at least give her a hint of a 1950s southern accent. Do I still have to go to confession? By the way, I didn't realize that the Catholic Church in the 50s was so inclusive. What if they just toss in some other nuns from Korea, Brazil, and Australia so they can call themselves Fox Force 5, which would actually make sense since it turns into an action movie in the third act. A gateway to hell. So it looks like Deborah is the only novice nun in this convent and they all conveniently learn to speak English fluently for her sake. Vatican sent in a pair of demon hunters. A priest and a nun. So they returned as heroes. Kissed the Pope's ring. The priest was made a bishop. What happened to the nun? Well, no one really knows. They say the experience was too much for her. Some say that she went mad. Thanks a lot, Pope. I single-handedly saved the world from a demonic entity and you promote Father Burke. And meanwhile, I'm stuck here peeling potatoes and everyone thinks I'm crazy. You could at least hook me up with a Starbucks gift card or something. Oh look, it's Maurice, aka Frenchie, from the prequel, who was last seen being possessed by Valak and had an upside down cross burned into his skin. I guess he's just gonna do some handyman stuff for the rest of the movie. Okay, I see. So this is a mid 20th century version of Mean Girls, and this one's Regina George. Stop trying to make fetch happen. Hey Maurice, do you wanna play baseball with us today? Baseball? Really? Gee, I wonder if the writer is American. I didn't realize that baseball was such a popular pastime for European girls in the 1950s. Have you ever heard of soccer? Sorry, football. What's next? Are they going to go to a monster truck rally and eat some hot dogs in the second act? Why don't you just set this movie in Cleveland instead? So you're telling me this Catholic French boarding school has Irish teachers, English-speaking students, and headmaster Madame Laurent with a British accent? Were there any French people in France in the 1950s? There was a cockroach in my quarters again. Ah, that's unfortunate. A cockroach? Don't you mean a load of cockroaches? I'll tend to it right away. Even Frenchie, played by a Belgian actor, somehow speaks English with a British accent. Ah, that's unfortunate. I'll tend to it right away. Bonjour. Delivery. Like most American horror movies, this one's mostly a series of loud jump scares. Like all horror movies, this movie has the bravest people I've ever seen, including the bravest kids in the universe who all willingly walk into all kinds of dark and scary situations all alone. 
If any of this happened to me when I was a kid, I'd immediately crap in my pants and die from a heart attack. Oh no, not the old standing facing away from the camera and looking creepy move. Are you okay? Are you okay? Really? You're alone in a house and see a man making faint choking and gurgling sounds who looks like he's possessed, so you approach and are all like, Excusez-moi, monsieur. Ça va bien? Oh snap. Usually horror movies don't like to off any kids, so I guess we can expect the demon nun to take out a bunch of people in the third act, right? Sister, you have a visitor. Boys? Save me, sister. <coughs> Oh, thank goodness. It was just an excuse to add in a quick jump scare, but it's just a vision slash nightmare and there's no danger. Whew. Your nose. Sister Irene, you are giving me crap for smoking, but meanwhile you're sniffing the devil's dandruff. Hook a sister up with some yayo, girl. Sister Irene, there has been an incident. A 90-year-old nun shot herself on the steps of her church. I'm so confused. This Catholic cardinal and his aide from the Vatican also have British accents. I should have paid more attention in history class. Is the Vatican based in London? Have you spoken with Father Burke? Father Burke is dead. How? Cholera. Yes, Father Burke died of cholera, and also he had a scheduling conflict since he's starring in a Showtime series. The church would like you to investigate what it wants. But this evil must be eradicated from the earth, and this is the church's highest priority, so go ahead and take care of it. Okay, do I get any backup? Nope, just you. But we'll give you $10 a day per diem for food and expenses. No alcohol. And sister, it goes without saying that no one should know about this high-level Vatican secret meeting. Hey, why is this random American troublemaker novice nun in here listening to everything? Here you are. What are you doing here? What do you mean? I'm here so this movie can have a buddy cop adventure angle and you can have someone to articulate your thoughts out loud to. Why are you here? I see the priest stand up and say he turned the wine into the blood of Christ. I mean, it's kind of hard to... Yeah, it's no big deal. Lots of people turn wine into the blood of Christ. We'll probably call back to this conversation by saving the day at the end of the movie. You need me. No, I need a team of hard, pipe-hitting Vatican priests with super soakers filled with holy water, not some random non-believing American nun who's never been in Europe before and doesn't speak any other language other than English. Foolish heart that I leave here behind. What a nice heart. Will you suffer? Uh, let's take a break. Fifteen minutes. Oh yeah, this brings me back to all the times when I was in school and our teacher dismissed the class for a fifteen-minute break mid-class so the handyman can come in and fix something. What's so important to fix that you can't do it later? I heard there was a faulty cabinet in the area. Or are you too busy tending to your personal garden while you're on the clock? Okay. Thanks, Maurice. That was totally worth interrupting class for. Relax, Sophie. We're not going to do anything. Do you want to have some fun? I feel like it's kind of defeating the purpose of locking up these doors if you're going to chain them so loosely that people can easily fit through. Of all the ridiculous things in this movie that we're supposed to swallow, the hardest for me might be that Sophie is willingly going to follow these mean girls who are always f with her into this scary abandoned chapel. It's called Defy the Devil. If you're watching carefully, he looks right at you. Oh no, I never saw that coming. Why did I trust these little bitches? What happened in there? Nothing. Nothing? Just a statue that walked towards me all by itself and then briefly turned into a demon nun before almost falling on top of me. No big deal. This is where we found him. Sister? Are you okay? Yeah, I was just having a vision that almost cracked the case, but thanks for interrupting. You're being a big help so far. There was a boy that night? A witness? Yes. Jacques, you might find him playing football. Football? In town. Not baseball? Pickleball? We had the handyman. He came from Romania. That is where he got his nickname. They used to call him Frenchy. <laughs> Okay, Maurice picked up the nickname Frenchie in the first movie, but I really doubt any French-Canadian person would tell people to call him Frenchie, especially in France, where they're all Frenchies. Caught you. Gee, Sophie seems to be in good spirits after what just happened. I mean, if it was me, I'd be traumatized forever and they'd find me three time zones away, huddled in the fetal position under the bed. But she's like, no big deal, just a demon nun attack. 
I'm sure nothing like that will ever happen again, so I'm not going to be afraid to walk around alone in the dark inside this creepy ass convent. Or Abby, Mom? or whatever. Mom? Sophie, if it was your mom, wouldn't she be answering you by now? Why, for the love of God and all that's holy, would you be walking up there alone? <sighs> okay, I'd be running a little faster than that. Man, this girl's brave. She barely reacts to any of this. What's the deal with all these French towns that are deserted at night except for little boys kicking a ball around? Jacques, don't be scared. Don't be scared? I just saw a priest get levitated and set on fire by a nun, and you're all creeping up on me? Irene, I hate to tell you, but you're in France. There's no way a ten-year-old French boy can understand English. That night, did you have a rosary? No, it was Father Norris. I took it. I'm sorry, I was scared. Whoa, that's impressive. I took four years of French and all I can do is ask how Monique is doing. So were all those boys apparitions or just super fast runners? Jacques? Phallic Easter egg alert. Okay, it's a pretty cool scene, but I'm kind of confused about the rules of this universe. I mean, is there anything that Valak can't do? He can possess or shapeshift into anyone or anything, levitate and set people on fire, and somehow also change the contents of magazines and simultaneously flip them in a scary way without causing the magazines to fall off the newsstand? Mad skills. Also, who keeps a newsstand open in the middle of the night in this deserted town? Man, I hate to be a production assistant on this movie. Okay, I want you to come up with 5,000 magazine pages from 1950s French magazines that all flip and sing in a super creepy manner. Also, a cafe au lait and a blueberry muffin. Chop chop! Uh oh, the camera just panned away and is panning back slowly and the lights are flickering. I hope we're not going to get another jump scare that turns out to be only another vision again. <laughs> Look at this flashlight beam. This always bugs me in movies. This is supposed to be the 50s. Even flashlights made in the 70s and 80s were absolute dog shit. This is what an actual 1950s flashlight looks like. Notice the weak ass beam that throws off three lumens of diffuse light. Maurice. Uh, do you mind not blinding me with that flashlight that you got from a time machine that throws off the same lumens as the sun? It's fine. It's fine? What the shits are you talking about? Your handyman is staring at the door in the middle of the night like the end of Blair Witch and wakes up in a trance and looks like a vampire and it's fine? Nah, man. I'm pretty fucking far from- Fine. The door opens by itself and no reaction. She didn't scream her head off and take off running but decides to go inside by herself. It's fine. Suddenly, it's Crouching Tiger hitting Demon. I had a vision. Uh, you sure it was a vision and you didn't just get a bad batch of yayo? Can't find Sophie. Seriously? After all the scary shit that's happened, you're gonna go off alone in an isolated and dark part of the creepy chapel? There's something wrong with the school. Something that doesn't feel right. Doesn't feel right? That's an understatement. You mean like a demon nun popping up all over the place and killing people? What tipped you off that something feels a little off around here? What happened? Did you see something? Anything? No. It's just a feeling. Nothing. Just the normal demon nun stuff. Now I guess you guys will need a translator since they'll all obviously be speaking French. This belonged to the priest? Yes, how did you know? I've been speaking to the Vatican. Oh, how lucky. Another English priest is in charge who explains everything we need to know in 90 seconds. I mean, they couldn't have at least had a priest who speaks English with a French accent. They were hunted. 
I feel like this movie tries to be too many things at once. Horror movie, buddy detective movie, action movie, and now Indiana Jones slash Da Vinci Code slash National Treasure. Except they solve the entire mystery in two minutes flat. This is the way you send that thing back to hell. Just like you sent it back to hell last time, until we see how much money the sequel does and decide to bring it back in a couple years for The Nun 3 or Conjuring 4. Why did Valak change the cross from the first movie to one in bold and italic font? Okay, now it's a zombie movie. You know, now might be a good time to, I don't know, get the fuck out of there. Hello, sister. Okay, that would have killed her. Personally, I'm not a big fan when horror movies turn into action blockbusters and monsters are all of a sudden yeeting people all over the place. That's it, Sister Irene. Harness the power of prayer and faith. Or swack him in the back of the head with a 2 by 4 Whatever works. The sun shines through the window and it makes the goat's eyes glow red. How exactly is this working? By shining a flashlight behind a stained glass window, somehow we get a laser beam? And where did all these tools come from all of a sudden? Celeste is like, f you, Regina George. You go take a look, bitch. I'm kind of psychic. I have a bit sense. What do you mean? It's like I have ESPN or something. I think there's someone upstairs. What the hell? <laughs> Gee, I wonder if we're gonna have a demon goat spin off next. Okay, am I the only one who can't see a damn thing going on here? So Valak is possessing Frenchie and the Black Phillip goat at the same time? I didn't realize demons were so good at multitasking. Uh, yeah, she'd be dead. Or at the very least, in a coma for the rest of our life. Uh-oh, scary figure facing away from the camera. So now Valak is also possessing Madame Laurent at the same time? I'm so confused. Payback's a Regina George. You know, I feel like Valak needs to be a little more goal-oriented. Instead of focusing on getting the eyes of Lucy, why is he wasting all this time scaring the bejesus out of these little girls? And why is Valak so inconsistent? He can easily off people with all these superpowers, but sometimes he's like, nah, I'm gonna let you live just to f with you. And then other times he seems to be trying to off them, but then suddenly loses all of his superpowers. Sophie, it's me. Remember, I've got your friendship bracelet, so we're BFFs, no? Now we're in the Marvel superhero phase of the movie with the Infinity Stones. Oh, thank god he's dead for good and the threat is over so we can all relax because there's no way he's coming back even though there's still 15 minutes left and we didn't see the demon nun and we never call back to the bit about Deborah not having faith. I don't know about you guys, but I'd feel a lot better if you chopped off his head just in case. What? He's not really dead? How could this be? Oh, finally we see the demon nun now that the movie's almost over. And now we're in the Star Wars phase with this giant Sith Lord. So Valak's got all these insane Jedi powers to materialize anywhere and manifest into anything and control multiple entities simultaneously, but somehow can't track down little girls and get through wooden doors? Man, either that swole devil goat is weaker than he looks, or those little girls have been doing crossfit. Fire cannot kill the dragon. Pray with me. Whoa. If 
JC himself could only turn a small amount of wine into the blood of Christ, then these two nuns are basically super Jesuses, right? You saved me. Sorry, Maurice. We gotta decapitate you just in case. You understand. So after all that, not a single person gets killed in the final act? What a jip. Maurice? Awkward. So about last night, um, sorry, I get a little crazy when I'm on the Devil's Dandruff. Man, they're pretty trusting after what just happened. So everyone's just gonna assume that he's forever unpossessed even though he just went ham on them when he was seemingly normal before? You're not even gonna check his body for any more burned in crosses? Plus we know in 20 years, Maurice is gonna be possessed again. What gives? Is this one of those once you go black you never go back deals? It's never a good sign when you get Sister Irene's patented look of worried concern. Damn it, I probably should have chopped off his head so my sister won't have to deal with him in two decades. Oh well, see y'all in the sequel. Bye! Hey, thanks for watching. Anything you agree or disagree with? What else did I miss or get wrong? I'd love to hear from you about any or all of this in the comments. Thanks!